Hello and welcome to Forum. I'm Phil Rees and this is the topical debate show where you, the people, ask the questions. Today, a subject that for more than two weeks dominated the global media, the Iranian presidential election. The official result gave the incumbent, President Ahmadinejad, a large majority, 63% of the votes cast. Immediately, his opponents, including his main rival, Mir Hussein Mousavi, claimed fraud. Opposition supporters took to the streets. After a time, the demonstrations turned violent as the authorities tried to disperse the crowds. According to official figures, 17 protesters and eight Basiji militia were killed during the unrest. Meanwhile, the foreign media had become a target for the authorities. They accused Western news organizations of inciting the violence and meddling in Iran's affairs. Foreign journalists were unable to report freely. Many were sent home, others restricted to their offices. So, was the Western media fair and balanced during its coverage of the election aftermath? Were foreign journalists simply impartial observers, or did they become actors in a drama that led to riots and tragedy on the streets of Tehran? And if they did take sides, were they right to do so? Well, Press TV did approach the BBC, CNN, Sky and other major broadcasters, but none was able to provide anyone to take part in this debate. Well, despite that, we have an excellent panel for you. To my right, Saeed Mohamed Mirandi. He's Professor of North American Studies at Tehran University. And to his right, Masoon Shajarai, the Chair of Britain's Islamic Human Rights Commission. And then to my left, Tim Llewellyn, a journalist and broadcaster and former BBC Middle East correspondent. And then to his left, Paul Moorcraft, a security analyst and journalist who's covered over 30 conflicts around the globe. Gentlemen, welcome to you all. But first of all, there's just time for me to announce that if you'd like to be part of our studio audience here in London, you can call our hotline on 0208 728 6472. Or you can email us at forum at presstv.co.uk. You should see those details at the bottom of your screen. And now, straight to the first question. And I think the first question will be coming from Merab. And uh, I see you up there in the second row. Merab, the floor is yours. Uh, the question is, has the international media helped or hindered uh, Iranian democracy with its coverage? And if you don't mind, please include Press TV in that as well. OK, well, has the international media helped events in Tehran? Can I come to you, Tim? Uh, what would you say to that question? If you're talking about current events, um, I would say definitely it has. I mean, the whole point of the Western media and the other media, not just the Western media, but we, we, we have stations like Al Arabiya, Al Jazeera and Press TV all pumping information into Iran from different sources and with different points of view, is to provide information to people. And Iran is a young population, very young population, eager for information, eager for news of the outside world, and eager for contact with the outside world. And I think that's one of the reasons, the main reasons, that there's been this explosion onto the streets. People feel restricted, they feel put down by the present regime in Tehran. And whether Ahmadinejad rigged the election or not, I think this explosion was coming, and it'll come again. So I think for any society, the provision of unbiased, free information about what's going on has to be a good thing. It may not always be accurate. It's, well, it's often very difficult to be accurate, and especially in the situation which obtained in Tehran, where there were enormous restrictions on the movements of journalists, mm -hmm. and cell phones were blocked. We had a really serious move against journalism. But nevertheless, the story came through. But you and think I it was, think you felt it was positive. I mean, Masoud, as someone of Iranian descent living in Britain, I mean, did you feel that it was fair and unbiased, the, the reporting that you saw? Unfortunately not. I, I mean, I actually think we need to sort of go from the beginning. I mean, the election, when, before it started, the reporting was very negative. And then even during the voting, uh, main sort of uh, TV station and media were coming out and identifying as controversial election. I mean, here was information being put long before there was even the result being uh, 
um, sort of identified or indeed any demonstration or anything taking place. So, so you'd then, agree the meddling, you'd agree with the Iranian government, therefore, that the well, Western, to, to some Western extent, journalism to some, didn't help. To some extent, you see, some of it is, is deliberate. And actually, I think to some extent, we need to separate the English programs from the Farsi programs, which are uh, beaming 30 channels from the United States, funded by 79 million sort of covert activities from the Congress. And, and you know, BBC Farsi, their standards have been really bad. You know, it's something that, you know, no journalist really could justify. Uh, but I, I think even the mainstream, you know, when you look at John Snow, uh, John Simpson, you know, when, and he's one of the best reporters. BBC reporters. Right, BBC reporter, and he actually turned around and says, a breath of fresh air that we see blonde hairs are showing underneath the scarf. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is actually very <laughs> tacky. If yeah. the reporter is actually gets a fresh of breath air to see young Iranians dyeing their hair blonde, and that <laughs> is the stand of what is right mm. and what is wrong, it actually shows exactly strange. where the problem is. Yes. I agree with that. I mean, uh, but that is crass, and I agree with you totally. That's the sort of... Western motivated observation, which I totally but, but object that, to, but that wasn't typical of the no, coverage. It has been, you know, compared... You're picking out one tiny incident. This, this wasn't the theme that I saw on Al Jazeera. I watched in English, of course, because I don't speak Farsi. I watched Al Jazeera, I watched BBC, I watched Sky. This wasn't but, the general theme. This, it wasn't patronizing, it wasn't cloying. But, it was, but you see, it was the point is that Iranians... showing what was happening. And, and by the way, any election, people have a right to, to predict what they think is going to happen and the mood on the streets. No, but, but this Paul, interpretation I mean, of so it. Can we just quote, I mean, Paul, just chip in. Yeah, I mean, do you think I'm it was fair or did it have a kind of cartoon quality, the good guy, the bad quality. guy? I mean, I'm going to punt the title of my recent book, Shooting the Messenger. For 2,000 years, dictatorships have shot people who, who carried out uh, the messages from any society. And th that's what has happened here. You have a dictatorship which is suppressing the news and the BBC and others went in and did their best to cover it. And the government tried to suppress that and that's what happened and you're picking on a, a ridiculously but, silly know, why example. Why don't you say the same thing when Israelis actually journalists are embedded with the Israeli armed forces being fed information and nowhere anywhere actually well, information every they say we the cannot report. To the Israelis. They repeat. We're talking about Iran. No, no, your know, your look, president has tried standard. to turn down on the outside. Yeah. The no, problem is domestic. 98% of the people are angry at what's happened look, and to well, blame the outside I, is stupid. Paul, and you silly. think that people weren't angry of what was happening in Gaza? Mm -hmm. That's not what you we're know, that, talking that's about. That's outrageous. Okay. You're changing you know, that, the sorry. subject. That's that is not that is not relevant well, to what we're discussing. Relevant. We're talking about Your the dictatorship, dictatorship in which actually was Iran. stopping the press from yeah. having access to the massacre and killing which was taking place. Two, wrong, two wrongs wrongs make a right. One thousand. No, but I didn't see you or any other journalist coming and actually complaining and saying this is an oppressive, <coughs> occupying regime. So I was in Jenin during the siege, uh, reporting on exactly with the with the Palestinians, reporting on what happened, well, and I've done many times. Well, listen, I tell you, before this gets heated, I mean, let's, let's hope it does get more heated. <laughs> um, I just get a final, perhaps, word from you, Professor. I mean, coming from Tehran, how did you see the Western media? Um, did you think that it actually tried to discover what was really going on, the complexities of Iranian politics? 